Hey guys, I'm going to do a, a quick review of the Arai X4 helmet, um, which I've owned for about a year, maybe a little bit less. Uh, I used it for a trip. Uh, me and a friend, we went to um, uh, we went to Norway, we went to the top of Norway and, and back, 5,000 mile trip. Two days it rained constantly, so it was generally put through his paces pretty well. But I'm going to show you around the helmet, I'm going to show you the vents, I'm going to show you the inside, how it all comes out, the visor, the peak, uh, and just give you a kind of general idea how it feels on the head and, and what's it like to ride. A lot of people had concerns with the peak, uh, how high speed would affect the stability of the helmet going at high speed, but um, I'll run through that as well. Okay, <clears throat> first off, I'm going to just show you around it start at the back this patch you see here let me just get in focus that's a reflective patch that I put on um, a friend at work you can kind of see it shining there uh, but at night that shines really bright it's just a little safety thing I put on but underneath there it's just pure white like there um, so it's the Arai Tour X4 in extra large um, first of all by the way, that is my uh, Scala uh, uh, G9 Intercom. I recommend if you have a GPS on your bike and you don't want to look at it whilst you're riding, which obviously you know is uh, not the safest thing to do, get one of these. They're dead easy to fit. It's just two small wires that run up the inside of the helmet. It couldn't be easier. And the speakers just fit on the side of the ear pads underneath the, uh, the, the the cover of the um, ear pads and the sound is really good you, it's even got an FM radio built in there but anyway I'll do that another time first of all the vents now these vent covers they can come off should you want to clean it or do or arrive to do any maintenance on it or anything but um, I'll just lift this up it's got the two levers underneath there um, and they basically cover a hole and the access to that hole is at the front of this vent here so you can either keep it closed and have the air inside circulating or you can open it up and have the, head, have the air flow through the front over the top of your head and out through the back I mean to be honest even even if it's really hot or really cold I always leave them open uh, because it just it just feels nice you know even even in the, the coldest weather your head still gets hot you know so that's the back vents um, so you, like I said these covers come off real easy should you want to clean it or anything but they're big enough the switch is big enough to use uh, with gloves on so if you want to close them off do so uh, also it it has it fully open you can have it half open or fully closed um, so it's well covered there. All right, let's go around. To now down the front here, you've got the mouthpiece uh, uh, vent uh, up for closed, down for fully open. Um, you really notice a difference. I mean, the thing with this helmet is, as you can see, the front sticks out. I mean, whereas a normal helmet will kind of go down a bit uh, closer into the mouth, you've got a ton of room between your mouth. And the edge of the helmet so there really is a ton of fresh air circulating in front of your face there I mean for a summer helmet it's perfect I mean you know I've driven it throughout this winter and it's fine as well but obviously <clears throat> if you want a nice breezy uh, you know kind of open face you can take this visor off you can take the peak off and you can just have a pair of goggles uh, and it works perfect and also you've got just these kind of um, uh, metal grilled vents at the front there and there's a little switch just at the back you can use with your gloves as well just to close or open them off so honestly you're kind of sport for choice for getting a load of air inside the helmet there okay the front vents just uh, on the top of the forehead there kind of again open and close they let in a ton of air um, keep the head really cool during the summertime. You can close them off, you know, obviously in the winter if your head gets too cold. And they kind of, you can kind of see the opening of it there. So even with this peak, it doesn't affect it. 
Now you can kind of see whether how the visor is there. It's kind of level with the top of the helmet. Well, you can actually move this down just by undoing these two screws here, taking that cover off, removing it, and it goes down the notch. So you can get more access to these vents, but I've tried it on both different settings and I didn't really see much of a difference, to be honest. Um, so there's the top vents. And you've got obviously the classic uh, Arai flip down brow vents there on the top, which again are, you can kind of have half open, half closed. Really, I mean, these are always open for me. All the vents are. Um, I find these come in handy the most. Um, it's good for demisting the visor as well. I mean, I do have a pin lock insert in there, as you can see, but uh, I had them open anyway, just for the fresh air. Now, one of my concerns with this peak was riding at high speeds. I do a fair bit of motorway miles and I was concerned that this peak would, you know, really catch the wind and vibrate badly and shake the helmet. Well, to be honest, it doesn't. Um, the only time you really notice that you've got the peak on is if you're riding at high speed, say over 60, you turn slightly, the wind hits this area here and it does just kind of move your head slightly. So you kind of got to, you know, it's not dangerous in, uh, uh, you know, at all, but it, you, you do notice it more than kind of a normal helmet. But like I said, you can take this off altogether and you can just have a uh, normal full face helmet with the visor down. Uh, you've got some options here to muck about with. Okay, let's have a look at the inside. Now you probably see where it's kind of furring up a bit here. Um, the jacket that I wore on the trip to Norway, it had a lot of Velcro around the collar and it kept on snagging on the, um, on the fabric here, which in turn made it go a little bit, uh, you know, fluffy, kind of broken it up a little bit. But um, other than that, the first, uh, Arai helmet that I bought was an Arai RX7 I think it was called and that was back in 98 and I bought that second hand for about £300 of a friend's brother uh, and I had that for 10 years 10 years solid riding um, and honestly nothing ever went wrong with it the inside stayed uh, pretty much clean and fresh uh, it was comfortable nothing ever broke the straps are fine so I mean I had a, a, a Shoei before this, uh, an XR 1100, and um, honestly, I didn't like it. The fit felt really bad on on top of the forehead. There was a lot of pressure pushing down, so I had to cut away some of the foam. And on a new helmet, you don't want to do that. But um, I bought this one specifically for the big trip that we did. But, um, and I'm very glad I did. Now the inside, um, everything comes out of here. You got the foam. Uh, ear pads here, the uh, the speakers for the intercom are stuck on the inside there, so nothing's actually touching the ear as such, but you still get good sound. Everything comes out, the top piece there, very light, just clipping, little button clips. The strap is the uh, double loop, uh, goes through and then back through the single loop and clips back into that button is there and honestly it's um, super simple it's got a chin guard at the front there that you can pull down, pull it down there. and that just gives a kind of little bit it just takes the edge off the chill on, on, on the bottom of your chin and the top of your neck there that works really well you've got the emergency pull tab uh, should you have an accident and you're on the ground the emergency services can see that they know what it is they yank that and it pulls out the side of the uh, the foam pad there, so they don't have to struggle taking the helmet off if you've got like a, a neck injury uh, that they don't know about. Now, this is the first helmet that I've owned which has had a pin lock visor insert inside. Uh, I've seen guys with it before, whenever my visor used to get steamed up, I just crack the lid slightly. Just crack the visor, let a bit of air in it or cool it. But these things, I don't know how I've uh, been riding so long without them. They're absolutely fantastic. And they really do uh, do a great job of keeping the mist and the fog 
from inside of the visor there. I thoroughly recommend it. They're easy to fit. They're relatively cheap. Um, they do, you, you can notice the line of it in your sort of peripheral vision, but because the um, the, field of, the field of view on this helmet is so big, you don't really notice it as much as you would do on a normal helmet. I mean, you know, when you're riding along on normal helmets, you can see this sort of edge in your peripheral vision, but on this one, it's just wide open. Yeah, there's nothing blocking your view. And going back to wearing a normal helmet, you really do notice it. You can kind of see how wide that gap is there. So there you go, guys. It's just a quick rundown. Um, <clears throat> the sort of pros and cons of this particular helmet. Um, I mean, it looks awesome. I mean, Arai did a fantastic job in the design. I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but it's got this kind of explosion pattern happening in these darker areas. Um, and it's just, you know, the whole design of it looks fantastic. They really did a fantastic job. And you can tell the quality straight away. I mean, this, I think this helmet cost £380 from sportsdirect.com. Uh, and that was with a discount as well. So they're not cheap. Um, I wanted the matte black one originally. Uh, but this is the only one they had in stock of like a the version that I would have had if they didn't have the matte black one in uh, And it's uh, I love it. I'm, I'm used to it now. It's perfect. I wouldn't wear anything else I mean, I own a, a, a Triumph Explorer. I'm gonna do a little review on that as well And for those sort of bikes are sort of off-road touring bikes, uh, you know, like the GS's This just looks the business. It looks great. So um, There you go I hope you like it. If you're thinking of getting one, I'd thoroughly recommend it. Super comfortable, very light, massive field of vision, very safe in that respect. Uh, everything works well. It's lovely, sort of solid feel to it. You can hear that there. You know, nothing's kind of loose and flapping around. The visor works great. You can actually, from the bottom of the uh, visor, can't really see it there, but that actually keeps out a lot of the sun. Especially in these sort of uh, these winter months, that's a, a, a great look. I don't know if that's intentional, but it, it does it does keep out a fair bit of the sun. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Just a quick review, just to show you, uh, just a quick rundown and a, uh, what it, what all the little bits and bobs do, how well it works. But um, you know, it's the best helmet I've ever owned. I have to say, just the pure lightness of it. You, you forget that you're wearing it, to be honest. Um, which is a good thing in my books, you know, you, you don't want to feel the sort of constant pressure on the forehead or whatever But uh, yeah, I'm going to be re reviewing some more things in the future um, I'm going to show you around the bike as well the Triumph Explorer uh, I'm going to do a review of the TomTom Tom GPS the latest one they've brought out uh, I'm gonna, I've got some camping gear as well. I'm going to show you around that sort of stuff. I've got a, a jet boil in the corner there So I'm going to do a little test of that um, if you're interested in buying it you can look at the video and kind of make up your own mind all right cheers guys see you later bye